power tool battery packs. How do we save them when the charger says you can no longer charge them, flashes that horrible light? I'm going to show you how to diagnose them, test them, do quick repairs, and actually go in and change out a single cell or something if we need to. It's cheap. It's way easy. Sometimes it's free, but keep watching. I'll show you how. Ryobi, Milwaukee, Makita, Black & Decker, Porter Cable, DeWalt, Rigid, Cobalt. It doesn't matter the brand. They all work the exact same way. Inside, this beautiful exterior is the same cells, whether it's a cheapo Ryobi or a top-of-the-line Milwaukee or a top-of-the-line DeWalt or Makita. It's going to look like this inside. So here we got two batteries with two completely different problems. This one will actually take a charge, but once you put it on the tool, it only lasts for 30 seconds, 45 seconds before the tool shuts off because the voltage is too low. So this has that problem. This one just flashes and will never take a charge. So the first thing you can do when it flashes and won't take a charge is do what I call the jump start method, where you just take a known good battery pack, doesn't matter the size, and you just, you, this is all over YouTube. You just take the positive, positive, negative, negative. You just hook jumper leads. Uh, people are using like paper clips and other sketchy things, but you know, just positive to positive, negative to negative, jumper it for, you don't want to do it long, maybe 20 seconds, 30 seconds, and if the voltage is too low, that could bring up the voltage, and then you can put it on the charger and see if it'll charge. I think it's kind of a band-aid. I think the battery ends up failing in the future anyway, because generally just one cell or something in there is bad. But let's go over the next technique, and that is individually testing all of the cells. And so in this scenario, you have to open them up. So we got this one right here, this one right here. You can actually see that I already, I already know which ones are bad. But you'll need a multimeter. They're dirt cheap. You don't need anything high end. We're just testing DC voltage. And you just go down and just test each cell. 3.8, 3.6, 3.8. They should all be pretty close. Um, 3.8 and 1.5 1.47 that's our bad cell all we have to do is replace that cell so on this one we won't even take a charge the safest way to charge the cells to test them is actually with a battery charger this was like 10 bucks and it is just an 18650 cell battery charger you know you use these batteries and flashlights and other stuff nowadays but i just have a cardboard plug just so it will contact the positive and negative and then I just have some alligator clips sitting on there. This just comes in and out. But I can take this and I can put it on each individual cell while it's in the pack. And I can sit here and I can charge um, positive and negative. That's, and I can sit there and charge that right now. I'm doing that one. And then they just flop. So I could charge every single one. See which one took a charge. Which one didn't. And in this case it would have been that one. And I would have been able to tell and I can just replace that one cell. So so this pack right here actually has a different, with its uh, problem of, it charges, put it on the charger, it'll charge back up, fall off, and then when I go test the voltage, look at this, my, my known weak one, 3.6, you're like, oh, that's not bad. 3.6, 3.6, 3.6, 3.6, that's a perfect battery pack, nothing's wrong with it. Nope, so we have to load test it. And that's pretty easy to do. So all these cells are about the same, but now watch this. I put it on there, and I'll fast forward to 3.6. We run it. The other cells are actually pulling it down, reversing the voltage. You'll see that bouncing back up. You can test, you know, each all the other cells stay well over three volts when you do this whole test. They're good, just this one. So that's a load test in the tool, and that'll tell you exactly what you need to know and which one needs to be replaced. So easy enough. Let's just go and replace it. Leave it. Leave it. Oh, you got it. Good job. So you've diagnosed which battery is bad. Now where do you get new batteries? How do you replace them? Now, first thing is don't just go by color because these are completely different battery packs. These are Samsung 13Qs and these are 20Rs. These are 2 amp hours. These are 1.3 amp hour. You cannot change the amp hour. And you need high drain. These put out like 15 amps. I think these put out like 20 amps. So you need to get stuff that's similar. You can go, people will hate me for saying this, but you can go different brands, but you need to have the same specs. You can't just take a battery out of an old laptop 
like here's a laptop one and stick that in because this will only put out you know maybe two amps three amps and you'll just fry this in immediately so um you have to get the same the easiest thing is is if you have two battery packs that are the same you know because you bought a pair at the same time or something and both of them are bad it's just cannibalize one for the other and so you have two battery packs that are bad make one good one if not you can just look it up this one's you know samsung 20 r's look them up on ebay you can probably buy one for six bucks um 13 q's same thing buy a couple buy two three who knows but the more you buy the cheaper they get so all we need to do is pop this one out let's say we got a new battery i'll grab a new battery right here we'll pop this one out and just solder in a new one on dual row packs this is a single row 18 20 volt this is a dual row 18 20 volt the two cells these two cells are linked so if you replace you have to replace both of them because they'll kill each other and here you just have to replace one if that cell's bad but these will test together because these are just paralleled together same with these two those two those two and those two so if these are bad both those need to be replaced so we got our donor battery pack right here this is an 80 volt uh cobalt that was thrown away because of one bad cell that was an easy one to test because it's zero volts and everything else has full charge so just pop the cell out and move that aside nobody's using these anymore they're worthless apparently got a little planned obsolescent with a uh, battery powered tools where after five years everything's just garbage but pretty simple all i have to do is pry off the little teeny spot welds i just pried them off right there pried them off on the other side the negative side is really easy and you don't have to worry about it too much the positive side you do have to worry because you see this blue outer right here under there is the negative so positive negative so if you're prying you don't want to short out the battery um, this battery is bad anyway but on a good battery the entire outside under this thin sheath is negative around the back and it just wraps up right where that blue edge is and so just when you're prying don't mess that up so i'm just going to pry or actually We'll pull it out this side. Uh, we will just probably cut off these little plastic tabs so I can slide a battery in and out just to bend this out of the way enough. And then we'll be able to slide a new battery in. Kind of just manipulate the plastic, broke the little ring a little bit, just so I can slide this out. Not a big deal. Just take the new one, put the new one back in. Before I did that, I actually sanded the ends. I scuffed it. You have to scuff it for solder to stick. Otherwise, the solder won't stick. Because you need to be in and out and fast, done. No, you're not going to damage it soldering it. The reason why they don't solder it from the factory is because it is slow and tedious. And it would take them four times as long to do a battery pack if you had to solder. Now, I will address a couple of concerns. Like I said, there's your positive and your negative is really close. If you just gob tons of solder and just ooze solder all the way down in there, you'll short out the battery. Um, it won't catch on fire. What it'll do is either melt the solder and the solder will just burn away and just bubble and pop away. Or it'll just, I, there's an internal fuse between here and the positive and it'll just short out and your battery will no longer work. I'm going to use a little bit of flux. This is a rosin core type flux. Um, I'm going to pre-tin, gotta be careful because this whole thing is metal and I've touched it before. My soldering iron is hot. I want to pre-tin this surface right here. Let it flow out. That's it. Now, if you've ever used battery packs and pulled them off a tool, they will get... I've had them up to about 150, 160 degrees where you can barely even touch these battery packs just off use. You, I mean, you can touch this. You're not putting that much heat in. If you're sitting there for... 45 seconds with the soldering iron on you're doing something wrong the soldering iron is not hot enough um, something's going wrong and you should stop dumping heat into the cell because yes if you just dump endless amounts of heat into it you could shorten the battery life but you i have to sit there and get it hot the puddle is there that's all we need that is eight 80 times more contact area than the little teeny spot welds they do okay now this, I will put a little bit more flux on the top. I want that bead to melt to the top of here. This tin strip generally doesn't need any pre-tinning. It's excellent. I'm going to use this screwdriver just to kind of hold down that flap along with the heat from here. 
So now I'm putting all my heat into the strip until I see my strip fall and melt the solder underneath. And it just did. Let's make sure it's flat. Screwdriver just holds it down for a second. We're good to go. Um, by not, you know, I've been I've been asked why I don't just solder from the top because I want to make sure that bond to the battery is the best, and the hardest connection there is the bond between the battery and the solder. So, the next one I'll put just a. You see how small this dab is? That's about what you want. You don't want that whole surface coated because it could ooze down in there. Okay, see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I put about seven seconds of heat into there. This acts like a heat sink. I mean, I can touch that. It's barely even warm. It cooled itself off so fast. I got good solder oozing. That's a technical term, oozing between there, flowing. And now, just wiggle it. It's in there, it's good. This should be a good battery pack. Let's test it, put it on the charger, see if everything works. Really quick on the tools you need, a $10 soldering iron will do this just fine. Grandpa's old soldering gun. We have this Ryobi cordless one that works amazing that I just barely used, but anything will work. Any soldering iron will melt that on there and you'll be good. You're gonna use a rosin core solder, which is an electrical solder. I do like an extra flux. I think it flows better. Problem with rosin core solder is sometimes you have to get enough out, enough quantity out for the flux to be there. Flux helps solder flow out. Without flux, solder just stays in a BB and doesn't stick to anything. Um, you probably don't want to use acid flux like you would in plumbing, but if you did, it wouldn't be the end of the world. You just clean it off. This will just corrode sensitive electronics. The ends of your batteries are not sensitive electronics. You can simply use like a Q-tip and rubbing alcohol and just clean it off. If that's all you have laying around, it will work just fine. No issues. People are going to shoot me for saying that, but it's true. The only other specialty tool that you'll need are torque security bits and generally the longer ones. They're just kind of handy to have around. They're not just good for this. They're good for a lot of things. But the, the screws on almost all these battery packs have a little security thing in the middle. So you need the security torques, which is a hole in the middle. Easy enough. They're cheap. I'll put a link below. So the voltage on that one I installed was just a little bit higher, but they should all, the, the charger should take care of it and we should be able to balance it out just fine with operation. So I'll put this back together. The only batteries that you'll struggle with and you might have a hard time with are first, Makita. Makita has a circuit board in there. I mean, virtually all of them have circuit boards, but after a few attempts where it tells you you can't charge it, it'll brick the circuit board and tell you no more charging you know you'll have to buy a new circuit board you can buy new circuit boards for actually really cheap in a new battery case for like 10 bucks or something from china also on milwaukee i haven't experienced this firsthand but i've been told that replacing sometimes when you replace a cell or set of cells in these by not having power to the circuit board it freaks it out and it no longer ever lets you charge again. And it'll freak it out every single time. So if you replace the battery packs, you also need to replace the circuit board. I haven't had that. I've done, I think maybe two, but maybe only one Milwaukee battery pack. And it did something like this where it flashed error on here. But once I put it in the charger, it reset itself and then it worked. Any day now, today, Ryobi takes forever. There we go. Green. Charged. Everything's pretty full on there, so it should be pretty close to charge. And we'll try test it out. They're newly refurbished battery pack. Yep. If you enjoyed that video and have more interest in building yourself some amazing battery packs, I have tons of other information out there. Uh, building super capacity battery packs that are bigger than anything you can buy in the store. You know, building the... $300 battery packs that Milwaukee and DeWalt sells in your own by yourself for like a fraction of the price out of or ding near free out of just garbage essentially you know battery adapter so then you can build a huge battery pack and then use it on any brand of tool all videos out there on those I'll put below in the video description everything on the tools that I used 
what's kind of required, what's not. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. Bye. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Stay. Don't. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. <laughs> Good job. You get them all?